I'm Amy Federico, a nurse practitioner in the Pediatric Oncology Program at Boston Children's Hospital and Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. And I'm Sarah Larson, a registered dietitian also here at Boston Children's Hospital and Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. We'd like to talk to you about the importance of proper nutrition during cancer treatment and how the use of a nasogastric or NG tube can help. You know, many of the patients we see in the hospital or outpatient in the Jimmy Fun Clinic have a variety of nutritional issues that are related to their cancer diagnosis or treatment. There are many reasons why our patients don't want to eat. Sometimes chemotherapy or radiation can leave patients feeling nauseous and unable to keep food down. Sometimes they just aren't hungry for extended periods of time. But we do have a way to administer proper nutrition to your child during cancer treatment, an NG tube. Using an NG tube to provide nutrition during treatment may help your child better tolerate treatment and treatment-related side effects and stay closer to the treatment plan schedule. With better strength and energy, patients tend to heal and recover faster. Also, providing proper nutrition via the NG tube keeps the digestive tract active, making it easier to adjust back to eating. We recognize that the decision to have a feeding tube placed is a difficult one, and we understand that the idea of putting a tube into your nose and down to the stomach sounds very unpleasant. And some of our teenage patients object because they don't want to be seen with a tube taped to their face. We hope that hearing stories from other patients and families about their experiences with a feeding tube, in addition to what you have already heard from your medical team, will help you make the best decision for you and your child. During the time we spent in the hospital, he had lost a lot of weight. He wasn't eating, he was really weak, like all his bones were showing, he was so skinny. And so we know that about six out of 10 patients may experience some malnutrition during their cancer therapy. Malnutrition can definitely affect the course of treatment. You know, an in-treatment can include chemotherapy, sometimes with radiation, sometimes with surgery. You know, each patient's diagnosis and treatment um, can be a little bit different. He was so skinny that the surgeon was not going to do the surgery unless he gained some weight. When somebody is extremely malnourished, you worry about taking them to surgery and them not having the strength to recover quickly. Being malnourished can lead to an increased incidence of infection, and just good nutrition helps the healing process. I was scared because I didn't know how he was going to do having a tube down his nose. I actually have a NG tube here. It's a very small, very flexible tube. I think that's a common misconception is that an NG tube is a, it's a big wide tube that's going to um, you know, be put into their nose and then they're not going to be able to swallow or not be able to eat. And that's just not true. Getting the tube put in for the first time, he screamed his head off, he cried. I was nervous because he was crying, but once it's in, he was fine. He went back to normal. He ran around and played and was okay. Most patients will say, oh, I was really nervous. I was so anxious to get this placed. I thought it was gonna hurt. And really, it took 15, 20 seconds to actually get the tube in. And as soon as it was in, and I realized, that's it. He um, fed well with it. He did great at night, because you hook him up when they're sleeping at night, or um, if he wanted to play, he had a backpack that he could put on, and you hook up the backpack with it, and he did really well with it. Also, for his second round of chemotherapy, he was able to get the chemo through the tube. And that's one of the benefits of pediatric medicine is that so many uh, medications are made in a liquid form. And in Trayson's case, one of his chemotherapy medicines um, was uh, made into a liquid so the mother could administer it through the tube so he didn't have to take it to, through mouth. Like in less than a month, he was already gaining pounds and looking, filling out and looking good. I'm glad that we did go with the two. Me and his dad made the right choices. Yay! I mean, you'll do anything to make your, your child feel better, but you don't want to put any more additional tubes in her. You don't want to do anything that would make her uncomfortable. You're trying to avoid all of that. It's not because she wasn't a phenomenal patient. She was doing everything right. 
everyone knows how hard it is that what she was going through, that they weren't giving this to her as a punishment. One of the biggest goals on top of making sure that patients are getting the nutrition that they need is to have patients and families understand that what we're doing for them is not any sort of punishment. We're working with the medical team to make sure that they're getting everything they need to stay healthy during treatment. Well, I remember with some of the medicines, it only came in a pill, so we would crush it up and put it in like oh. confectionery sugar so it would taste better. It was still really bad. I remember one time I took it with like, oh. and I just threw it up right afterwards. And so I'd have to take it again. Yeah, and that was hard too. Like you don't feel good, you throw it up and they're like, mm, it was down for about five seconds. We have to try again and I'm like, and that's where that stress level comes up. They're offering this NG2, but then you're thinking, you don't know if yes is the right answer. So when there's a lot of resistance to getting an NG2 placed, one of the first things that we try to do, especially with teenage patients, is point them in the direction of someone down the hall that might have a tube. You no, know, you had a roommate, remember? She was really helpful, she was a teenager. So she had the NG2, remember? And she would demand it. I mean, she wanted it like, like as soon as it was out, she wanted it back in. And so she was great. I mean, she was a, she was very helpful because she would tell Mary Kate, Mary Kate, get it because you don't have to wake up. You don't have to taste the medicine. Really helpful with taking medicines. And I think the feeding part too, like maybe she wasn't aware of how much weight she was losing. So for us, that was really on the parents' side that we knew at least she was getting calories because there was a point when you're in treatment, you might have really bad mouth sores or something. You're really sick. We're looking at calories, protein, fats, carbohydrates, and then also vitamins and minerals. So we can put something through the tube that's commercially made. It's already prepared and gives patients all of the nutrition that they need. So it's something liquid. It can actually be something similar to a product like an Ensure. We do have different brands, but liquid, complete nutrition that can be provided through the tube. It kind of felt weird. It almost felt like a giant piece of spaghetti just going down your nose. I'd say patients um, definitely get used to it. Um, I'd say for a few days, maybe they would feel the sensation of the tube on their throat when they swallow, but it doesn't cause any pain. It's just a sensation they feel, and eventually that sensation goes away. In the end, you only had it, I would say, I think about six weeks, um, and got her really through a really rough part that was a tough part of that treatment. And once you got over that, you know what, she did great. And once we started getting the nutrition and getting them feeds and giving them their energy back, almost everyone says, I can't believe I didn't do this sooner. After the chemo, that just like, I didn't want to eat anything, I didn't want to do anything, because like, it just totally like wiped me out. You were throwing up yeah, a lot. Throwing up she a couldn't lot. keep anything down. Yeah. And like, I didn't want the tube at first, so I was eating a lot and then like throwing up after. Good. Our medical team and dietitians work really closely with the families to try lots of oral supplementation, but it still may get to a point where a child may not want to eat or a teenager is kind of forcing themselves to eat and that just can lead to more um, nausea and vomiting and uh, feeding intolerance. It was the sickest I've ever been in like my life. Like, and it was like, five days or seven days. I think we kind of spiraled around the discussion, just the, my husband and she and I a little bit, um, for the, as she was losing the weight. It's just kind of ugly, like a, an ugly thing in your nose. And like, it's just like, it's not natural. Like people look at it and it's like, what is that on in their face? She had one um, episode I had left on a Saturday and she had been throwing up and as I left, she just looked at me and she said, I think I need the tube. So she made the decision. I think the NG tube is definitely something we keep in the back of our head when, it's, when we're watching somebody be very malnourished, very weak, not wanting to eat. And then it's a slow discussion with the families over a period of time um, because having the decision to put a tube in is a process. I had to get it in like five times because like, um, I was like, like I threw it up a few times and um, by like the fourth time, I didn't, I hardly like noticed it. Like I was so 
common still, like because I was like used to it. Usually if a tube comes out, it's because the patient vomited, and then we would just pull the tube out completely, give the patient a break, and then at some point, um, negotiating with the patient and family, we would put the tube back in. Pretty much she forgot it was there. Um, and I think too, like on, on 6 North, like there's just a new normal up there. So you got used to kids with tubes and I don't know, none, none of it phased. Yeah. After the first few days of having it in, I think she forgot, I forgot, you just kind of became part of her. To be totally honest with you, by the time kids are ready to go home, especially teenagers, they've posted pictures on Facebook, they're on Twitter, they're on YouTube. Oh, here's me, I'm getting my treatment. They don't even realize what's on their face anymore. They get so used to it. I gained my weight back and um, it helped a lot more on 6 West, um, the bone marrow transplant because um, it gave me the energy to walk every day. Um, I walked like two miles, three miles a day. I knew she needed it and I knew it was gonna help her. So if that was the end result, then that was, you know, I would have put it in. If I honestly, if I, looking back, I wish we had gotten a feeding tube the day we were admitted and it was just protocol. <laughs> it's your choice. If you wanna be in the hospital longer, then stay there, uh, have fun. Um. <laughs> Or if you want to go home and hurry this up, um, get the tube.